All right, so here's the study guide for latitude, longitude, oceans, and seas. So starting us over here, um, latitude and longitude are imaginary lines, and then, we, of course, we branch off into those sections. The horizontal lines are the lines of latitude, and they also happen to be the first number that you see. Um, at zero degrees of this horizontal line is the equator. You know, so I'm, if I'm looking at this map again, here's that horizontal line running across here, and this is going to tell us whether we're north or whether we're south, so that's latitude. Uh, so when I say they indicate north or south position. All right, what about the imaginary vertical lines? So these are our longitude. So again, coming back to our map over here, these are those long lines that are dropping down, and they tell us whether we are west or whether we're east. Um, the vertical, so the vertical zero degrees, again going back to our map, would be the prime meridian running right here. All right, moving over to, let's see, where do we end up? Number eight, so we're looking for number nine. So currents are the continuous movement. So currents don't stop, they're always moving in one direction. So if I come over here to your map, we have these currents, again, they're moving in one direction. Okay, and they're moved by wind patterns. Um, so again, be careful with this one. Don't say they're moved by wind and continents because if it's just one current, it's being moved by wind. That's it, stop, end of story. Um, in your notebook, I asked you to draw this little arrow connecting this and the idea of a gyre. So just make sure you take a look at that for sure. Um, so buoys that do not move, these are fixed buoys. What do they measure? They measure current speed and they measure current direction. Now the other ones are the drifters. Um, if you call it a drifter buoy, that's fine. If you call it a drifter on the test, totally fine too. Uh, number 14, I probably should have worded it a little differently. It should have been, what do they record? They record their location, so it records location. All right, moving over to number 15. These are made up of multiple currents. This happens to be the gyres, and we talked about five of them. Now this one, between 16 and 10, Make sure you, and again, in your notebook, I had you draw an arrow somewhere in there. Gyres are shaped by wind. So if you call it wind patterns, that's also fine. And continents. So two things, wind and continents. Or you could, again, you could say wind patterns and continents. North Pacific Gyre, it's made up of five currents. North Atlantic Gyre, made up of five. So think about this one. Your northern oceans are made up of five currents, okay, a piece. Your southern oceans, Okay, are made up of three currents apiece, Indian Ocean made up of two. Now, make sure you know them, like try to memorize them in order or think about them in order. So like if I'm in the North Pacific, let's just say I'm starting off on the California current. So California current, after the California current is the North Equatorial. After the North Equatorial is the Kuroshio. After the Kuroshio is your North Pacific. And then after your North Pacific, you could put Alaska, or even if you came back to California, you'd be fine. Um, South Pacific, and try to remember them in order. Like if you're at the East Australia, or let's say Peru current, Peru current, what's after the Peru current? Because you're going counterclockwise. You have your South Equatorial, after that you have East Australian. Be able to do that for the North Atlantic and the South Atlantic. You will get questions like that without your map help though. Like you can't look at your map on those questions. All right, so that takes us all the way up to like number 35 over here. So 35, if you watch this video link, it talks about a Japanese tsunami that happened a few years ago. And they estimate that over the next three years, we're still going to be getting debris from that tsunami. Um, this starts off on the Kuroshio current because if I'm coming over here, Japan is over here. And it first travels on this current. Then after it comes across, remember you're paper is connected to this side. So Kuroshio current is over here. It comes across the North Pacific and then it'll come down to California. So again, it starts off on the Kuroshio. It will travel across the North Pacific. So again, across this one and then we'll come down the California current. All right, so that takes care of that one. All right, what about message in a bottle? So if you start off near this particular news story, so if you click on here, it tells you what current you started off on. Um, and then what currents you travel on. So if I'm gonna come over here real quick. So this part of the video shows, again, the overall path, like if you know, it starts here, so that, that's where they dropped off this message. 
and then it ends up, sorry, just rewind the video and it ends up way over there and you can tell what currents it traveled on. Um, and in this particular case, it took about three years to arrive. Now, on the test, am I going to ask you about this question? No. But like this question, like not specific to the video, but you should know like, okay, if you start off on the Gulf Stream, what currents is it going to travel across? Like that you should know. Um, here, like, am I going to ask you about, you know, how long is it going to take? No. But if I ask you if it starts off in the Kurashio, you should be able to track the path all the way back to the Kurashio. Number 40 and 42 right here. Um, these you kind of got to think about without using your map, and I'll show you how to do that. So here it's saying if you're at 30 north, 120 west, what ocean are you in? First off, this is a big clue. It's 30 north. So you know it's one of your two northern oceans, either the North Pacific or the North Atlantic. What about the 120 west? Now think about your paper. So I'm going to come back here. Think about your paper. This is zero. Remember, zero cuts across the middle of your map. If you imagine your hand on the right-hand side, this is your east part. Your hand on this side, this is your west part. So right here, if you look at the Atlantic, the Atlantic goes from basically 100 and lower. So if it's north and then your longitude is 100 and lower, you're in the North Atlantic. If your number is over 100, Okay, over 100, you're in the North Pacific. That's kind of how you tell using the number. So again, if you're looking at, okay, 120, it's over 100, right? That means you're in the North Pacific Ocean. See, over 100 in the North. Okay. What about the next one? You're at 30 South, 40 West. Again, super easy. 30 South, it's one of your Southern Oceans. 40 west. Again, you're on the west part of your map. Again, look at your map. So the left-hand side, it has your North Pacific, your South Pacific, North Atlantic, South Atlantic. Okay. So you're still on the west, but guess what? You're under 100. So this is your South Atlantic gyre. Again, look, you're in the south. You're under 100. How do you know if you're in the Indian Ocean? Guess what? It's the only ocean that's really in the east. That's really all you, you kind of got to worry about. Yeah, a little bit of the Pacific is on the east part of it, but not much. So not much of the Pacific is on the east part. So if you can remember that, you should be good to go. Um, finally, the two questions that it's on there, but you didn't have to answer are 43 and 44. So Google, how does it represent numbers? So make sure you know the first one is your line of latitude followed by your line of longitude. North and east are represented with positive numbers south and west with negative numbers. The north and south are easy. Make sure you, you get your east and your west you know, settled as far as what's what. 